Hi, everyone, and welcome to the 8th Annual UAGC Early Childhood Conference. We are super excited that you decided to join us for this session. This session is called Behavior Management, Promoting Positive Student Behavior. Dr. Shanika Bell is going to be your presenter, and she is an associate faculty in the MACE program, and we are super, super excited that she's here with us. So an introduction about Dr. Bell. She is a dedicated and passionate educator who has a journey from humble beginnings as a substitute teacher and a paraprofessional to become an esteemed educator with over 18 years experience. She eagerly entered the field as a substitute teacher, eager to join and gain experience and make contributions to the classroom. Her talent and dedication quickly became evident, and she transitioned into a role as a paraprofessional, providing invaluable support to her teachers and her students. Her experience in this role deepened her understanding of the diverse needs of students and inspired her to pursue a career as a full-fledged educator. So throughout her career, she has been a dedicated mentor and leader. She's inspired, she's supported her colleagues, and she has led professional development workshops, mentored in, um, aspiring educators, sharing her expertise and passion. And we are super excited um, for her to be here today, and I am honored to be her colleague. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. Next slide, please. Oh, uh, we're having technical problems. Sorry. No, it's okay. Uh, isn't it going? Right down at the bottom, too, on the left. Yeah. There you go. Yay. It's okay. Technology oh, changes everything. We have to do it over, right? No, that's fine. We're good. Let's keep going. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. We kindly request your attention for a brief moment in the spirit of transparency and utmost respect for our community. We have some information we'd like you to read on this disclaimer screen. By taking a few moments to read through the disclaimer, you empower yourself with important information regarding the boundaries of our knowledge sharing environment. Next screen, please. All right, so please take a moment just to read through this screen also, and then together we're going to embark on some exciting topics in early childhood education. And Dr. Bell, the floor is yours. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I'm so happy that you're here. So our object goals and objectives are, number one, to identify the characteristics of effective teachers. Number two, to understand why children misbehave and identify effective strategies for dealing with student misbehavior. And number three, to identify techniques for establishing and managing effective learning environments. So what is behavior? Anything that is observable and measurable. Behavior is learned over time through the environment. Learned, meaning it was taught, Time, meaning it takes time to change. An environment consists of interaction with people, places, and things. Reasons students commonly misbehave. Students don't know the expectations. Students don't know how to exhibit expected behavior. Student is unaware he or she is engaged in the misbehavior. Misbehavior is providing student with desired outcome. For example, obtaining attention from adults and peers or escape from difficult tasks or non-desired activity. Take a look at this picture. I can't believe I got an advanced degree for this. <laughs> Principles of behavior management. Assumption of behavior theory. People are constantly engaged in learning and every experience adds to a person's knowledge base and influences their subsequent actions. Therefore, effective teachers, number one, spend more time promoting responsible behavior than responding to irresponsible behavior. Number two, recognize that misbehavior occurs for a reason and take this into account when determining how to respond to misbehavior. The science of behavior has taught us that students are not born with bad behaviors. They do not learn when presented with contingent adversive consequences, but they do learn better ways of behaving by being taught directly and receiving consistent 
positive feedback. Students who chronically engage in problem behavior have learned that it is a functional response for getting what they want, are in many cases avoiding academic tasks they struggle with, and often do not have a practice alternative or more appropriate behaviors to fall back on. Help versus hindering. Are we setting students up for misbehave, to misbehave? Every time a student engages in problem behavior, escalation or a power struggle, they are further practicing that response. So as educators, we need to prevent students from practicing habits of problem behavior and escalation. Teach more appropriate alternative behaviors. Instructional approach to behavior. View students' behavior as a teaching problem in which errors need to be eliminated and correct responses need to be taught and strengthened. Be proactive and less reactive. We need to teach expected and desired behavior rather than take the risk or expect that students should know or will figure it out on their own. Our tendency when students don't follow behavior expectations is to punish students rather than teach students. Would we punish a student for not reading a word correctly? Here are some behavior management truths. Consistency is the key. If students are engaged, they are not causing trouble. You can win the battle, but lose the war. Choose your battles wisely. Parents can be allies or enemies. And assigning blame is ineffective. Behavior management truths. Children need structure. Students rise or fall according to our expectations. If you fail to plan, you plan to fail. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. And we all make mistakes. Give it time. Here are some implications for the classroom. Be patient with students as they begin to work towards change. Assist students with designing and implementing a plan to improve. Give private praise if appropriate for positive changes. And understand that behavior will slip sometimes and don't give up on the child. Choices. You cannot make anyone do anything unless they choose to cooperate. Children allow us to do what we do in our classrooms. We can manage the situation by what we choose to do and say in response to a given situation. Behavior. When a problem occurs, the first question you should ask is, am I doing something that is creating or contributing to this problem? Is there something I can change? If not, then what is causing this problem? And how can I help? More behavior implications for the classroom. There is always a reason for what is occurring. There is always a goal behind every behavior. Attention, power, revenge, avoidance of failure. Address the behavior, but investigate to figure out the cause. If the cause is not addressed, the problem will continue. Reacting. Reacting to a problem generally escalates the problem, while being proactive usually helps to de-escalate or avoid the problem in the first place. Reaction is filled with emotion, not thought. It is a human, physical, and emotional reaction to a stimulus. And our reactions are always productive. Reacting. What do the following common teacher reactions accomplish? Such as yelling, arguing with the student, 
criticizing the student or throwing students out of the room. ABCs of understanding chronic behavior patterns. A, meaning what happened before the behavior occurs, which is the antecedent. B, what is the behavior? C, what happens after the behavior occurs, which is the consequence. Antecedents, what triggers the behavior? What happens immediately preceding the behavior, preceding the problem or target behavior? What triggers the behavior? Be specific. What activity? What peers? What task? Describe in detail. Consequence. What is the response to the behavior? Meaning, what happens immediately following the behavior? How do peers respond? How do the adults respond? What are the consequences for the student? What is the student gaining as a result of engaging in the behavior? How is it paying off for the student? The student learns through repeated experience that under these specific antecedent conditions, if I engage in this behavior, I can expect this consequence. Let's take a look at this chart. In reading class, the student is asked to read the word aloud on the board. That's in column A, the antecedent. B, the behavior, the student tries, but reads slowly, struggles, and gets the word wrong. C, the consequence. Peers laugh at the student. And one student says, that word is so easy. What did the student learn? Next day, the student is, is asked to read the word aloud on the board. So what happens today? Reinforcing consequence. If the consequence is rewarding, desired, the subject learns the behavior is functional for getting what they want. Behavior increases in the future. Punishing consequence is if the consequence is punishing, undesired. The subject learns the behavior is not functional for getting what they want. Then behavior decreases in the future. Here's an example. When sitting at lunch, at the lunch table with a group of cool peers, if I try to get their attention appropriately by offering to share, C, peers ignore me and don't respond, do not get desired attention. So therefore the behavior is punished, less likely to occur in the future. Next example, when an unpopular girl comes to the, ta comes to the table with cool peers and student wants attention, B, if I make fun of the unpopular girl, peers will laugh and give me attention. Therefore, the behavior was rewarded and more likely to occur in the future. So what are we teaching? What are students learning when they are sitting idly and not doing their work for three to five minutes with no teacher response? They are continually asked to complete assignments that they cannot be successful with or they are not provided opportunities to practice corrections to errors they are making academically or behaviorally. It's important to create consistency and fairness. Number one, develop and teach expectations and routines. Have students practice appropriate behaviors and routines. Create consistent and effective routines. Number two, respond consistently to reward appropriate behavior and to inappropriate behavior with corrective feedback. What we do as adults often affects a child's behavior. Remember, reinforcers increase the likelihood that a behavior will occur again, and punishers decrease the likelihood that a behavior will occur again. Is your response, is your response reinforcing or punishing. Teacher behaviors needed for effective communication. Call student by name. 
relaxed and neutral facial expression. Calm, unemotional voice tone. Positioning, meaning open stance, angled to the student, not direct face-to-face. -face. Hands still, minimal gestures. Keep the rest of the class in visual. And consider the student's boundary tolerances, such as proximity. Why teachers should be specific in behavior descriptions. It increases teaching effectiveness. It increases effectiveness when correcting inappropriate behaviors. It increases the chance the appropriate behaviors will continue and communicates expectations. When making behavior descriptions, be specific. Make your description repeatable. Use a calm voice. Use exact quotes. Don't forget body language. Describe things not done. Demonstrates when necessary. And avoid judgmental statements. Describing behavior specifically, for example, the antecedent, when, just now, a few minutes ago, where, in the back of the room, in the hallway, preceding conditions, just after Bill butted in line, observing and describing person's behaviors, such as body movements, you pushed Joe, you turned around, facial expressions, you frowned, you smiled, verbalizations, you said something like intensity, how long, how often, etc., in a loud voice. Classroom management is all of the things that a teacher does to organize student space, time, and materials so that instruction and content and student learning can take place. Two major goals to foster student involvement and cooperation in all classroom activities, and to establish a productive working environment. Important aspects of a well-disciplined classroom. There are discipline, procedures, and routines. Effective teachers introduce rules, procedures, and routines on the very first day of school and continue to teach and reinforce them throughout the school year. Basic principles for discipline. Avoid power conflicts and put downs. Use private correction. Isolate the missing behaving student. Seek out the causes of misbehavior so the situation is less likely to reoccur. Learn to distinguish between minor and major problems. Don't overreact. Respond to each situation in a fair and consistent manner. Discipline versus punishment. Discipline strives to replace an unwanted behavior with a desirable behavior. Punishment takes away a behavior by force, but replaces it with nothing. Discipline Positive behavior change is expected. Punishment, the worst is expected and the worst is often received. Discipline allows child to rebuild self-esteem. Punishment damages fragile self-esteem. Discipline, the disciplinarian is in control of their own emotions. With punishment, it allows anger to be released physically by the punisher, allowing for dangerous loss of control on the adult's part. Procedure is how you want something done. It is the responsibility of the teacher to communicate effectively. A routine is what the student does automatically without prompting or supervision. It becomes a habit practice or a custom for the student. A smooth running class is the responsibility of the teacher and it is the result of the teacher's ability to teach procedures.
Three steps to teach procedures. Explain, state, explain, model, and demonstrate the procedure. Rehearse, practice the procedure under your supervision. And reinforce, reteach, rehearse, practice, and reinforce the classroom procedure until it becomes a student habit or routine. Ineffective teachers believe that teaching is not about relationships. They believe that they can handle any situation alone. Believe that it was good enough for me, by golly, it ought to be good enough for them. Believes that punishment is more effective than discipline. Believes that they can't make a difference. And they forget that they are modeling. The effective teacher establishes good control of the classroom, does things right consistently, affects and touches lives, exhibits positive expectations for all students, and establishes good classroom management techniques. The effective teachers, teacher also realizes that teaching is not a private practice, is flexible and adaptable. They listen, listen, and listen, and understands the research process. Teaches with proven research-based practices and knows the difference between an effective teacher and an ineffective one. I would like to read this quote by Hain Janot. I have come to a frightening conclusion. I am the decisive element in the classroom. It is my personal approach that creates the climate. It is my daily mood that makes the weather. As a teacher, I possess tremendous power to make a child's life miserable or joyous. I can humiliate or humor, hurt or heal. In all situations, it is my response that decides whether a crisis will be escalated or de-escalated in the child humanized or dehumanized. In closing, remember that you have a big impact on how things operate in your classroom. The way you act and feel every day affects the atmosphere in the room. If you're in a good mood, it's like sunny weather. If you're grumpy, it's like a storm. As an educator, you have a lot of power. How you react can make things better or worse. You can either make things calmer or make more chaotic. You can make a kid feel valued or like they don't matter. Let's focus on promoting positive student behavior through effective behavior management. Thank you. Dr. Bell, that was amazing. Thank you all so much for joining us today. We hope you will choose a different section, another session um, on our YouTube channel. I'll talk to you soon.